volunteers hold a free summer camp to help impoverished students of a city school in Dominican Republic. Medical staff and volunteers mobilize to clean Douliu City Hospital to prepare for a medical evaluation. Welcome to Die Headlines. I'm Margaret Lin. Thank you for joining us. In Dominican Republic, city volunteers have held a free summer camp for the students at La Romana City Elementary School. Besides providing breakfast and snacks, the volunteers also arranged a variety of classes for the children to enjoy. Ni At Romana Tsiji Elementary School, the summer vacation is quite different. Tsiji volunteers have started to prepare for the courses in the two-week summer camp as early as March. There is a variety of classes. The teacher will introduce to these global footprints. There are also classes on environmental education, arts and craft, health education, and physical education. Through these works, the students do their homes and families. We also teach children environment concepts. We teach them to turn toilet paper rolls into flowers. The Chinese class combines Chinese calligraphy, sign language, teachings on filial piety and Confucian spirit. The outdoor sports has do the students' favorite activities. There are games that use rice bags and school desks and chairs as props. Some parents ask if the summer camp emphasizes on school work. It does not. We hope to provide interesting and lively activities so the children can enjoy a happy summer vacation. Since most of the students come from impoverished families and they may not have regular meals during the summer vacation, the camp provides breakfast and snacks every day. ¿Te gustó el pan? Está bueno. ¿Y tú? Tsuji volunteers have held a winter air distribution in Ladysmith, South Africa to help impoverished families. One of the local volunteers who came to help at the event is a Tsuji care recipient. After receiving help from Tsuji, she has vowed to join the volunteers to help other people in need. This is Ladies Meath, South Africa. Among these volunteers who hand out Tsuji's aid supplies are some local volunteers. The volunteer named Beauty is also a care recipient, but she has vowed to be someone who helps others. I'm still poor, but I'm very grateful to receive help from Tsuji. Tsuji gives us food in our time of need to help us ward off hunger. That's why I'm willing to volunteer with Tsuji. Tsuji is a very nice organization which always helps people in need. This is one of Tsuji's winter air distributions in South Africa. Two bags of rice, beans, and six pieces of soap are distributed to help each impoverished household. The living conditions in Taiwan are relatively good, but the conditions here are very poor. We sympathize with them, so I should do what I can to help. Since I'm a Tsuji volunteer, I have to carry out Tsuji missions to inspire compassion here and spread Tsuji spirit to more people. When the distribution comes to an end, Tsuji volunteers and the villagers sing together, sharing happiness with one another. 
A residential area in Kulai, Malaysia, suffered a windstorm in early July, causing more than a dozen household roofs to be blown off. When city volunteers assessed the damages after the disaster, they found three seniors who live alone needed assistance. Therefore, the volunteers found someone to help them repair their roofs. Big trees on the roadside were blown up, and more than a dozen households' roofs were badly damaged. The storm and heavy rainfall in Kulai, Malaysia, frightened the local residents in this residential area. That roof was damaged by strong winds. The wind was very strong that day. So many houses' roofs here were blown off. In this area alone, there were eight houses affected. On that day, the wind was so strong that I could hardly go out of my home. It was horrifying. We were trying to escape but a strong wind trapped us in the house. After the disaster, polite city volunteers came to assess the damages. It was then they found three seniors who live alone needed assistance. Therefore, the volunteers quickly found a contractor to help them repair their homes. It was a windstorm that day. My house did not leak, but some of the roof tiles were blown away and some were damaged. Thankfully, Siji came to care for us in a short period of time. I am not a rich person, and I also live a difficult life. Since I specialize in home repairs, I came to help and contribute my share. The Indian Malaysian woman's husband passed away less than half a year ago. On the day of the disaster, she was terrified. Fortunately, she received help from Tsuji. It felt like a tsunami was coming. I usually saw that scene on TV only, so I did not expect this time I would encounter it in reality. Fortunately, the roof has been repaired now. I'm very happy. The volunteers' loving care not only soothes the seniors' fears, but also ensures that they will no longer feel helpless. In Kunsan, China, there lives a young girl who has scoliosis, and her parents divorced when she was young. Since then, she has been living with her grandparents. The two older grandparents do not make much, and in the past, they could only rent a garage to live in. Thankfully, her teacher gave them a house to live in. In addition, Tsuji's care for the family beginning five years ago has gradually allowed them to make a term for the better. Bringing a birthday cake, Tsuji volunteers from Kunsan are visiting Zhen Yufan. <laughs> Little princess Yufan, today you are a princess. You look so beautiful. 12-year-old Zhen Yufan is smaller than other children her age as she has scoliosis. After her parents divorced, she's been living with her grandparents ever since. Tsuji volunteers began caring for them five years ago, and they remember to celebrate her birthday each year. Her grandparents provide for her daily living, but for things like birthdays, they don't really see the importance. We have always come to celebrate her birthday with her, so she can feel that motherly love. The three of them can smile happily now, but they have had their share of hardship in the past. We used to live in a garage. It was just one big room without anything. We just had a table for eating, and we lived there for several years. Where she lived before, it was not convenient for her to attend school or other things. I felt they really bad, so I gave this place to them to live in. Thanks to the teacher's kindness, the three finally have a decent place to live. <laughs> Meanwhile, Tsuji's companionship has helped this shy girl open up. We think of you as our own child, like a family member. So whenever you have secrets, you can tell your grandparents, you can tell us. We can be friends, you can trust us with your secrets. Every time the volunteers visit, Yufan would donate the money she's collected in her bamboo coin bank. This time, she's also donating her locks of hair. <laughs> With the love and care of Tsuji volunteers and her teacher, Zheng Yufan's heart overflows with familial love. And now she can pay that warmth forward to other less fortunate people.
In Taiwan, Doliu City Hospital will undergo its first medical evaluation in August. The medical staff and city volunteers have mobilized to clean the environment, not only to ensure the hospital can successfully pass the evaluation, but also to provide quality medical services for the patients. Parents nowadays are reluctant to have their children do household chores. I think I'm also unwilling to let my two children help out at home. Today I brought them here to learn. Although they did not do very well, at least they made it. This way they will help out at home. Regardless of age, everyone sees the hospital as their own home, working together to ensure Doliu City Hospital can pass the medical evaluation. We always make the environment in the hospital clean and tidy. So the patients often praise for our environment when they visit here. They say everything in the hospital is very clean, and there's even no bad odor in the toilet. Everyone cleans the environment carefully as they do not neglect any corner. We found some small places had not been cleaned for a long time, so there was some dust. After the clean-up activity, I feel the environment has become different, as it is cleaner. We reunite the strength with Ciji volunteers from Yunlin and Jiayi, as well as the staff members of Douliu Ciji Hospital. Everyone works together to complete the task of passing the evaluation. I am very grateful for the collaboration of all the staff members and Ciji volunteers. Everyone works with one heart to clean the hospital, providing a comfortable environment and quality medical services for the patients. Northern District's Tima members provide bi-monthly free clinics in Shimen Sanji, caring for the senior residents. One doctor remarked that being able to visit the patients and provide care is really meaningful. In hot July, Northern District Tima members did not forget their bi-monthly meeting with the residents in Shimen Sanzi. 97-year-old Grandpa Xie is in good health, but his wife just suffered a stroke. The medical team gives advice on ways to do therapies and also brings her a gift. This bow is for you. You should exercise with this bow. Every day move it, turn it like this. If we simply ask the grandma to exercise her hand, she might not have the motive. However, with an elastic bow in her hand, she might exercise her hand with it. Dr. Shi Yu Tai, who is soaked in sweat, is participating in Ciji's free clinic in Sanzi for the first time. Interacting with the seniors has made him realize the seniors really need medical attention. Our interactions with the patients at the hospital only last for a few minutes. TIMA members are able to go to the patients' homes and provide care. It is really meaningful. Besides the house calls at a free clinic area, services from five medical departments are provided. In one morning, more than 20 people, most seniors, came to see eye doctors. I heard that there is no eye clinics in Sanzhi, therefore I think the free clinic is necessary. It is very troublesome for these seniors to travel to Danshui to see eye doctors. After the free clinic ended, the volunteers also led some doctors to visit other city volunteers. Last year, a fire broke out at Gu Zhanjing Lian's house and she underwent night grafting surgeries. The Dama families have come to encourage her. Sometimes we show her some videos so that she can see what other people went through and how they are doing right now. They can recover this much, so can you. You tried hard, but you can work even harder, and the conditions will improve. The volunteers and medical volunteers treat the seniors like their own family. During the house calls, they pay much attention to caring for the patients' daily lives. They hope the seniors can let go of negative thoughts and enjoy life to its fullest. Six Tzu University students have joined a study abroad program at St. Joseph College for the first time. The person who facilitated the exchange program is Peter Lin, a professor at St. Joseph College. He is a Tzu volunteer and hopes that the students in Taiwan can seize the opportunity to broaden their horizons. <laughs> At St. Joseph College in Brooklyn, six students from the University are experiencing a different kind of class. We join English writing, meditation, 
and philosophy classes. What really surprised me is how close we can get to the teacher. From the teachers to passerby and waiters here, they are able to understand what I'm trying to express, even if I'm just speaking some simple words. They are very friendly. During the three-week study abroad program, the students also visit a local nursing home. So when we look at the world, and I think that uh, Su Chi would have the same attitude, we see ignorance as one of the greatest problems in the world, causes the most suffering in the world. And so the idea of helping young people to transform uh, through education and then to model that behavior is something that both of the institutions share. Brooklyn is in fact a big melting pot for immigrants. Therefore, they will learn that many things here are different from Taiwan. I think this is a good way to learn for Tsuchi volunteers, or these students who might become Tsuchi volunteers. They should learn to broaden their visions. Peter Lin, who is from Taiwan, is also a city volunteer. He knows about how the two schools wanted to have exchange experiences. Therefore, he has made this study abroad program possible, helping city university students broaden their horizons. Students from Tsuji University have spent two weeks at Johor Bahru Tsuji Kindergarten doing volunteer surveys. Before they leave Malaysia, the kindergartner held a closing ceremony and expressed their appreciation for TCU students. After two weeks, TCU students' overseas volunteer service has come to an end. Johor Bahru Tsuji Kindergarten has held a closing ceremony for these big sisters. I still remember that Jeffrey held my hand and walked around on the first day. Starting on the second day, he kept hugging me. Every day, some children asked me if I wanted to go home with them. They also said that they would like to go back with us. As these TCU students recalled their wonderful time spent with the children, they could not hold back their tears. It is wonderful to join activities with Sister Xuan Xuan. I appreciate her playing with us. I feel very happy. After they go back to Taiwan, I will miss them. I will behave and be good. On the other hand, these college students have also gained much from this summer volunteer experience. As we interact with the children, we've also found our young hearts again. As the closing ceremony, many girls from my class cried. It was worthwhile interacting with the children, as they are very warm and they will remember us. Originally, I thought I would just come here for two weeks and then leave. However, after I got to know them, I feel reluctant to leave. I want to stay here to accompany them and to watch them grow up. They gave us love and helped us grow happily. Even after these big sisters go back, we must take care of ourselves. In the future, if the big sisters have a chance to come back, they will see that everyone has become even better. How is that? As their volunteer service comes to an end, these TCU students have also felt the love of the children, which will stay with them even after they go back. A well-known sky bridge just after the Xihu service station is not for humans but for animals to safely cross from one habitat to another. In fact, such passages were first pioneered in France in the 1950s and is now quite common in many parts of Taiwan. The National Highway No. 3 in Yunlin, Linnei section cuts across the Butterfly Road where the purple crow butterfly migrates back to the countryside. Over the years, with the joint efforts of all walks of life, a set of practices for safe passage of the purple butterfly has been established. For example, a protective net with a height of 4 meters and a length of 1,100 meters keeps the purple butterfly from flying low over the highway and being hit by vehicles. The effect has helped stabilize this population. At the beginning, the mortality rate was about 3 percent, and in the past few years, because of the amount of insects each year, the lowest mortality rate has been more than 0.2 percent, and the average is about 0.3 percent. Taiwan's first freeway has been open for more than 40 years. 
In the early days, only roads for people were taken into consideration, and there were no concerns about animals traveling along such routes. Eventually, natural habitats were divided by roads, so every year, nearly 10,000 animals are killed on roads, shocking many people. We probably accumulate about 10,000 pieces of data each year. From this data, we can compare with our 1,000 kilometers of freeway, and in particular, each 10 kilometers section. We can see trends when we learn that South Central sections have the highest mortality and National Highway 3 in the mountains sees more road kills. According to statistics from the Freeway Bureau, the largest number of deaths are birds with a total of 46,000 dying, followed by cats and dogs, numbering 16,000. As for endangered animals such as the leopard cats, which are of concern to everyone, the number is about 3,000. Although the number of small and medium-sized animals is small, their size may cause hidden dangers to driving safety and must be given priority. We use this animal protection net to guide the animals to this road culvert to safely pass to the other side. This allows the leopard cat to safely pass the space under our highway. We also built the stairway so it can cross the gap directly. It won't feel surrounded and can cross directly from the east side to the west side without being cut off. However, the most special thing is that when you pass the Shihu rest area on the freeway, is the Sky Bridge, which plays an important role in the conservation of wild animals, such as the leopard cats. On the freeway before, there was much roadkill, not just endangered animals like the leopard cat, but also others, such as the mast palm civet and the pangolin. The special protected corridor is 144 meters. The main function is to connect the habitat on both sides of the freeway. We hope this can provide a friendly and comprehensive ecological environment for animals. Like the animal bridge in Miaoli, a similar passage for animals was made above the Daling Tunnel in Jiayi. It's a way to preserve the natural environments for wild animals. Monitoring from August 20th last year has shown this passage to be used by the mass palm civet, Chinese ferret badger, crabs, dogs, and reefs montag. In the case of birds, we also saw incidents of the crested goshawk and serpent eagle. The first animal passage that helped animals cross the road first appeared in France in 1950, and there are currently 66 in the Netherlands. Other countries such as Canada, the United States, and Japan also have a number of such passages which were studied by the Freeway Bureau. In terms of animal passages, Banff National Park in Canada has created well-known passages crossing both over and under the freeway. As for the box culverts, the passes under the highway, such as for the leopard cats, we look to Japan's Ariomos Island, where such passages were made to protect the bobcats. As human roads become a dangerous crossing for animals, we need to consider building safer, eco-friendly passages for our friends in the animal world to enhance their continual survival. A doctor in Malaysia who has embraced vegetarianism for 13 years chose to hold a vegetarian banquet in his wedding to promote the benefits of meatless diets. We will leave you with this. Thanks for watching and see you next time.